Thank you very much, Tom. I'm on the air right at the moment. Uh, can you hold the line just a second? I'm talking to Tom Johnston, the press secretary for Lyndon Johnson, who has reported that uh, the 36th President of the United States died this afternoon in an uh, ambulance plane on the way to San Antonio, where he was taken after being stricken at his ranch, the LBJ Ranch in Johnson City, Texas. He was stricken at 3.40 p.m. Central Standard Time, 4.40 uh, Central uh, Eastern Standard Time. Three agents who were at the scene, uh, who are permanently attached to the ranch to protect uh, the president, uh, went to his immediate aid, gave him all emergency uh, aid they could, put him in a plane, I suppose, uh, Tom, uh, one of the president's own planes. Uh. Colonel George Granahan was the man who proclaimed uh, the president dead upon arrival at Brook uh, Army General Hospital at San Antonio. And Mrs. Johnson was notified uh, of the events uh, at her office in Austin and flew immediately to San Antonio. And uh, Tom Johnston, uh, no relation, the president's new secretary, has just told me that uh, from Austin. Any other details, Tom? All right, thank you very much, Tom, and we'll, of course, be keeping in touch with you. Thank you. Tom Johnson tells me from Austin that uh, details, of course, are, will be forthcoming. There are none yet for the uh, funeral arrangements for President Johnson. Repeating, President Johnson, the 36th President of the United States, who served from the time of uh, President Kennedy's assassination in 1963 until uh, 1969, when uh, President uh, Nixon succeeded him, uh, has died. He died of a heart attack. He had been suffering from a heart uh, ailment for some time. He'd had uh, two uh, serious uh, previous heart attacks one as recently as a couple of months ago. He had been back at his ranch, though, and uh, seemed to be in reasonably good health in uh, recent weeks. He had been up and around. He had not been uh, bedridden in any way, uh, and he was stricken this afternoon at uh, 3.40 uh, this afternoon. He died shortly thereafter, apparently, despite the best efforts of three Secret Service men at the scene who gave him uh, every emergency aid they could. As we told you earlier, former President Lyndon Baines Johnson, the 36th President of the United States, is dead at the age of 64. He died this afternoon in uh, his private plane after being stricken by a heart attack. We now have a filmed obituary of former President Johnson. Lyndon Johnson was a man of domestic vision and domestic triumphs, which were overtaken by distant events. He ended as a war president, trying to rally a nation to his own convictions. But it was a war without victory, and for many Americans, a war without heroes. His prestige was one of its casualties. Born to a tradition of politics, the personal style of the Texas courthouse, and sometimes roughhouse, his father and his grandfather were elected to the Texas legislature. But Lyndon was his mother's child. She taught him to read, mostly history. At 16, a hillbilly boy in a jalopy, he went looking for work in California. He came home to go to college on $75, borrowed money, and then spent a year teaching school to the second-class citizens of Texas, Mexican-Americans. Later, they would vote for him. At 23, he went to Washington as secretary to a Texas congressman. A few years later, met a Texas college girl named Claudia Taylor. He called her Lady Bird. He married her within two months. In 1937, age 29, he barnstormed the state as a 100% New Deal candidate for Congress. He won with help from young people for whom he had found jobs as state director of the National Youth Administration, a Franklin D. Roosevelt appointee, and a Roosevelt protege. He was like a second daddy to me, Johnson later said. In World War II, he was the first member of Congress in uniform, served as a lieutenant commander, went back to Washington when FDR recalled all congressmen. 
Afterwards, he would seldom appear without his silver star decoration in his lapel. 1948, in Congress, a six-term veteran with a reputation as a hard driver of himself and his staff. At home, a father of two young girls, a breadwinner making payments on a house, on furniture, on a car, talking about quitting politics and going into business. But that year instead, he raised his political stakes, ran for the Senate as a Truman Democrat against a conservative Democrat. Johnson won by 87 contested votes, earned the nickname Landslide Linden. And the Johnson career faltered in July 1955 when a massive heart attack nearly killed him. He retreated to the ranch he had bought near his rude birthplace. The family fortunes had begun to rise with Lady Bird's inheritance invested in an Austin radio station. Dominoes, an acquaintance once said, were his only sport except for politics. By 1960, Lyndon Johnson was the most powerful man in the Senate with a potent ally in the House. Speaker Sam Rayburn, his father's old friend, was promoting him as the Democrats' presidential candidate. Johnson said he was interested in nothing less than first place, but the Kennedy men came better prepared, and in the end, he accepted second place. I will faithfully discharge the duty Vice of President the Lyndon Baines Johnson, Johnson, sworn in by his old Trump. Texas friend and mentor, Sam Rayburn. The duties of the office of which I am about to enter, so help me God. We were not like brothers, he once said about Jack Kennedy. We were not constant companions. But he sat in on cabinet meetings, on the National Security Council, head of the Space Council, and job programs for Negroes. But for the kingpin of the Senate, the vice presidency was a come down. He said so in a conversation at the LBJ ranch. I think President Kennedy kept me as well informed as any president ever kept a vice president informed. Uh, I was disappointed at times. I was. Uh, I missed the active role that I'd played. I think anyone that becomes vice president uh, 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 is disappointed, particularly if he's been an active uh, man in public life, as they often are. On November 22nd, 1963, in Dallas, John F. Kennedy was assassinated. Aboard the plane on which his predecessor had arrived in Dallas two hours and 52 minutes before, Lyndon Johnson was sworn in as the 36th President of the United States. As the leader of a shocked and troubled nation, he addressed the Congress in special session. I profoundly hope that the tragedy and the torment of these terrible days will bind us together in new fellowship, making us one people in our hour of sorrow. So let us hear, highly resolved, that John Fitzgerald Kennedy did not live or die in vain. He would never quite escape the Kennedy shadow, but he saw himself as Kennedy's trustee. I did everything I would want a man to do for my program or my family. And after I finished the dreams that he had, I started on my own. And I had some, too. The average American does not demand much. But we have a right to expect in this rich country, if we're willing to work from daylight to dark, we have a right to expect a job to provide food for our families a roof over their head, clothes for their body, an opportunity to have our children educated, and the right to worship God according to the dictates of our own conscience. And with your support, and with your help, and with your faith, and with your confidence, and with God's help, we will have it in America. Thank you. Johnson called for a great society, and he got Medicare, a major civil rights bill, improvements in housing and education, building an imposing record of domestic legislation his first year in office. The 64 convention was LBJ all the way, though he later told me he had strong doubts about running. He was dismayed by divisions in the country that he couldn't mend. He called this pressing the flesh. He seemed to get from this what some men get from solitude. 
This time, the landslide for Lyndon would be a real one. 61%, the largest ever. A mandate to pursue his own dreams as president in his own right. For a while, he seemed out from under the shadow. The 64 mandate turned loose the greatest flow of compassionate legislation in the history of the Republic. Johnson, the engineer, the sure hand at politics. This bill was to relieve the chronic depression in Appalachia. Perhaps his greatest achievement was the 1965 voting rights bill that put the weight of the federal government behind the franchise for black citizens in the South. Their cause must be our cause too. Because it's not just Negroes, but really it's all of us who must overcome the crippling legacy of bigotry and injustice. And we shall overcome. From the domestic scene in which his attempts at social reform were unparalleled since the administration of Franklin Roosevelt, the president was now increasingly forced to turn his attention to foreign affairs, a move that was to be both crucial and fateful for his administration. Our objective is the independence of South Vietnam and its freedom from attack. We want nothing for ourselves, only that the people of South Vietnam be allowed to guide their own country in their own way. But nothing he said could still the growing opposition to the war at home and the communist Tet Offensive in 1968, though costly to the communist on the field, produced a decisive turn within America. The Boise just came out of the holes in the wall and said, let's get out. And that's what Ho Chi Minh had been trying to do all the time, was to uh, uh, win in Washington what he had won in Paris. To win in this country, um, in the homes of this country, what he could not win from the men out there that represented us. And it was only when the going got hard, and it was only when it, uh, it took a lot of willpower to stand up, did we have much division on this war. On March 31st, 1968, Lyndon Johnson dropped a political bombshell in a speech to the nation. First, he announced a unilateral halt to the bombing of 90% of North Vietnam, and then his greatest surprise. With American sons in the field far away, with America's future under challenge right here at home, with our hopes and the world's hopes for peace and the balance every day, I do not believe that I should devote an hour or a day of my time to any personal partisan causes or to any duties other than the awesome duties of this office, the presidency of your country. Accordingly, I shall not seek and I will not accept the nomination of my party for another term as your president. So in 1969, President Johnson retired to his Texas ranch to take no further part in political affairs. CBS News will present a retrospective on Lyndon Johnson beginning at 10 o'clock Eastern Time tonight. This is Walter Cronkite. Good night. This is CBS.